it's Rosa here. I hope you're all having a lovely week so far. I'm going to be doing a different type of video today, which has been a requested video, requested by Jemmy Jam, and she asks, um, I would love to learn on learn slash see how you've perfected your zip finishing and lining skills. Now I definitely haven't perfected these skills at all. I found a way which works for me. Um, and I think looks neat and tidy and does the job really quite well. Uh, I'm not saying this is the perfect way of lining your bodice or necessarily the way that maybe the professionals do it, but it's definitely a way which is easy to do, I find really quick and gives a really, I think, a professional clean look to your garments. So I'm going to be at my sewing machine showing you how I line a bodice. So the first step here, you can see I've cut out, using my beautiful cotton and steel octopus fabric, uh, two backs and a front in the main fabric and two backs and a front in my bodice fabric. As you can see as well, I've already sewn in my darts, so I'm ready to get started. The first thing which I'm doing here is pinning the shoulder seams on both the bodice and the lining. So I'm pinning them together and sewing across with the sewing machine just at the shoulder seam, not doing any other seams, just the shoulders to start off with. Once you've sewn your bodice, front to your bodice backs at the shoulder seams, this is what you should look like, what you should look like, this is what your project should look like. At this point it's also a good idea to give it a quick press with the iron, make sure your shoulder seams are pressed open, your darts are all pressed in the right direction. The next step is to lay your lining fabric right side facing up down on the floor and on top of that right sides facing down, so you've got right sides facing each other on the inside, uh, place your main fabric so that all of your seams are on the outside. And then what I'm doing here is just pinning all the way around the neckline. The first thing I do is I match up my shoulder seams and then I also match up the ends of the neckline and then I pin all the way around. Next, I do the same thing with both armholes, which I'm showing you here. So I just simply pin the main fabric to the lining fabric all the way around both armholes. Again, always starting off in the center, matching up your shoulder seams and then working your way out from there. When you've pinned your neckline and your armholes completely, it's time to head back to the sewing machine and slowly and carefully, as you'll be going around curves, stitch along those lines. So you're just going to sew all the way around the neckline, all the way around both armholes, attaching the lining to the main fabric. Next it's time to head over to the ironing board once again, lots of ironing involved in sewing, particularly with stiff cottons like these. And what we're going to do is just give the whole thing a really good press before we turn it inside out. Okay, the next bit needs to be very, very carefully done. I've absolutely messed this up several times. You need to pick up your scissors, your fabric scissors, and notch all the way along the armholes and neckline of your garment. And you can see here I'm going quite slowly and quite carefully. I like to do quite a lot of little notches, little um, snips, uh, just because I think it gives a smoother curve. And you can see here that I'm going all the way around the neckline and both armholes. Here you can see a little bit of what it will look like once you finish snipping your curves. Okay, this next part is kind of my favorite bit because it's a bit that feels a little bit like magic when you turn the whole thing inside out. So what you need to do is pull, put your arm up through the bodice front 
and pull gently <laughs> pull the bodice back through to the bodice front so you can see I'm putting my hand through grabbing the fabric at the back and then pulling that through so it's the right way around so it's no longer inside out on that side and then you repeat the process on the other side to make sure that the bodice back and the bodice front are both the right way round. So all of your raw edges around your neckline and armholes are inside the dress and your pretty fabric is on the right side of the dress. Now it's time to head back to the iron once again and give it another press. This time is essential to iron. I mean, it's always important, but so you can really, really press out your neckline and your armholes, check that there's no pulling. And if there is, you need to go back inside with your scissors and give it a few extra snips. Check there's no uh, pleating or anything bunching up on the inside of your fabric, stopping it from turning into a beautiful, smooth look. At this point, lots of people might choose to understitch their lining or perhaps top stitch. This is, of course, entirely up to you if you want to understitch or top stitch to keep your lining on the inside. Personally, if I was using a slippier fabric, like a rayon, a viscous, something like that, a poly, um, yeah, poly, I probably would, or I definitely would, need to top stitch or understitch. However, with this fabric, I know that it's going to be fine. I know that it's a stiff cotton. I know my lining is going to stay where it needs to be. So, once you've pressed it all out, it should look something like this. You can see that the armholes and neck hole are completely encased there's no raw edges there whatsoever it's all nice and smooth and nicely pressed out the next step we're going to be doing is joining your side seams so you need to get your side seams which i'll show here you need to get your side seams from the back bodice and the front bodice and carefully pin them together ensuring once again that you match up your seams first in this case it will be your underarm seam which you need to match up and pin before you pin the sides of your lining and the sides of your main fabric for your bodice side seam. Of course, you have to repeat this step on both sides. Once you've pinned those bodice side seams, we're going to head back over to the sewing machine and stitch up the side seams. Again, going slowly and carefully, making sure you don't get any ripples. Once you've sewn your side seams, give them a little quick press open, as always, and it should be starting to look like a bodice. Exciting! Uh, after you've done this step, the next thing you'll need to do is attach your skirt. Uh, again, I'm not going to be showing that process in this video, but if you would like a video on that, do request it down below. S attaching the skirt is a really nice, simple bit of this. So you just either gather or pleat or whatever it is you're doing with your skirt. And here it is, ta-da, looking like a dress. Once your skirt has been attached, it's time to insert your invisible zip or your regular zip, whichever you would choose to use for your project. So here I am, sewing in my invisible zip. I don't have a proper foot to do this, I just peel back the teeth on the zip carefully as I sew along. Once you have inserted your zip, it's time to cover it up. So what I do, as you can see here, is I fold the lining over the top of the zip and I pin all the way down, ensuring that I fold under a little fold at the waistline. This is so that we can slip stitch this into place to cover up the gathers on the skirt and the any messiness which might be around the waistband later. So I'm just pinning down the side and then I'm going to go right ahead and sew along that line. So I'm sewing the lining on top of the invisible zip with the right sides facing on both pieces of fabric.
when you pull it out, ta-da, it's a nice, neat, concealed, invisible zip. So it's completely sandwiched nicely in between the lining and the main fabric. Some people do this by hand and like to slip stitch it, which is of course beautiful. I'm a little bit lazy sometimes, <laughs> I do like hand sewing, but when I can avoid it, I do, some, I do sometimes like a cheeky shortcut. So your dress should be coming together by now. I zigzag any visible skirt seams, um, so maybe the side and centre back seam on my skirt, before pressing, again, lots of ironing involved, like I said, pressing out my bodice and turning under that little lip which we fold over on, folded over earlier on the bodice lining. Once I've folded over this edge, I pin it, as you can see here, over the top of the waistline, which hides all the gathers and then I simply slip stitch it into place. Once you've finished slip stitching, you'll need to hem your skirt, whether you choose to do it on the machine or by hand is entirely up to you. I actually chose to use the machine to do this hem, as I quite often do. And ta-da, you have a finished dress. I've put some close-ups in here so you can see the details of how it's all finished around the neckline and the armholes and the zip and the waistline. Just how I like to keep it looking neat and tidy inside my dresses so there's no no visible seaming on the inside of the bodice. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It is my first how-to video so I hope it was clear enough. I think visuals are the most important thing, particularly for me when I'm sewing things. Sometimes reading the instructions can be really confusing but photos can be much much more clear and helpful. So I hope this video has been helpful for you if you're looking for a few little tricks to um, finish your projects off neatly. Thank you so much for watching. Do come back again next weekend for a new video and if, as this was a video request, if you have any particular video requests which you'd like me to film then do leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, hope to see you, see you again soon, bye!